Hello spider peeps. So in this week's video, I'm going to continue working on this iPad screen. So I removed this from the iPad in a previous video and I've been waiting for their controller card to come so that I can see whether I can take control of this Apple screen and use it as, a, as an external monitor. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, which is where SpiderMap gets all these PCBs made even before they were a channel sponsor. Okay, so here's, <laughs> here's, here's the card, it's arrived. What a weird packet. This wasn't in a, a plastic bag, it's just arrived like that. It's uh, the, the, uh, the Customs Dwayne sticker on there. Um, nothing to do with Dwayne Dibley. I always laugh when I see Dwayne. And uh, Spider Map's address is on the other side. All right, so let's, let's get into this. It was so weird, I thought I needed to do a box opening for this because they're uh, very strange. Looks like it's had a very heavy bag, very heavy box put on it, maybe some engineering weights. It said iPad 2. Oh, that's a bit worrying that that says iPad 2. <laughs> When these arrive, these LCD cards, I've done a lot of these on the channel, but they always seem like they've been hand wired and not machine wired. I mean, look at these little cables here. They're really delicate. Oh, nice little zapper for it as well. I'm just trying to unravel it without breaking it. All right, so we've got the little LCD connector. I'll just check that that looks good. Yeah, it looks uh, very similar. Never sure which way these are to go in, but uh, I think it did explain it on the listing. So we'll check that so as not to muck it up, but it, it looks compatible. Whether it's wired up correctly is another thing. I've got another board. What's this board for? Oh, that must be, it looks like that's an inverter board. Maybe it's just a power board. It could be, it's got a coil on there. So it looks like that's probably a power chip. But that's good. And then we've got the buttons on the other side it's working out how to fit it into the case now so i've got the case and if i look at that there's definitely not enough clearance on that so looking at that i've got to come up maybe another whole centimeter another 10 mil on there um for the american people watching it's 10 mil yeah i've never worked out fractional inches Okay, but I've got my VGA and I've got my HDMI card on it, so that's what I want. So I need to find a way of getting that to the outside, uh, getting this to the outside and just connecting these and putting them onto the board and finding a um, like an I.O. port model for that, which I can put into my OpenSCAD. But actually looking at it, really, there's one, two, three, four, four holes and they could all be squares. Tell you what, I've got an idea. So this is another uh, enclosure that I downloaded from Thangs. And one of the things that you can do, if you find one that's compatible, you can actually use the slicer to connect the two things together and sort of take one from the other uh, or add them together, um, which means that I could use something like that. But looking at these now, I mean, I can get the sizes off that looks like the first the first part of it there so that square the HDMI and the VGA cable might just fit in that but the rest of it didn't so really I need to find a box either design my own in SCAD or find a box that I can download and add to this model below with the slicer. It probably would be better if I designed the whole thing in SCAD to be honest. Let's just quickly work on the case. Now obviously uh, this case that I did isn't big enough. It's slightly shallower than it should be. I have adjusted it on my open SCAD. Then the next thing to work out what to do is to put the holes for these ports on the side of the case. So I actually found a case model an STL to just put this in and it, it wouldn't fit within this. I tried to hollow it out on um, bamboo slicer and put it in the same place and it just wouldn't work. So I decided I was gonna burrow the holes out instead in SCAD. Then I've got more control of where they go in the end as well. 
but I did get this little part which I chopped out of the um, original model for the case and then I used that to fit in there like so 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 I knew that was the right thing to do and I knew that would be the right size so then I measured that and let's go to SCAD and I'll show you what I did next so SCAD mostly is just drawing primitives so you see here I drew three cubes the, each of these three pieces there and they represent the holes that I'm going to dig out through the side of the case and then the final one is a cylinder and a cube on top of each other so this final thing is just a circle with a square on the bottom of it then I, I messed about with the sizes of the cubes so they weren't technically cubes but they were square solids well they were solids what's it called they were 90 degree angle solid objects I, I don't know what it's called and then I'd laid them all out together like so. So the next thing I do is I need to um, rotate them. OK, so you see now I've um, rotated those and I've moved them out a little bit as well. OK, so now I've got all of that. What I've got to do is take that away from the original box. So I'll use a difference command for that. So let's, uh, let's just set this back up the way it was okay so that's this difference there so uh, this takes away the box from the other let's just turn the box back on as well okay so when i take those away from each other i've got these rather lovely holes in there and the other thing that i want to do is to put a back thing here that will uh, stop these from being pushed back in when you plug something into it so I've just got another cube here, it's sort of a bar really, I've got. And that should be the back of the card. OK, so now I've got that set up, I need to make sure that, that these will all fit. So what I did, I sliced this a little bit more. So I just printed out some little bits, like this little bit here. This is a bit that's going to hook around there and hold the card in at the back so you see that one that one didn't fit I right, get rid of that one so here's another one I tried so I adjusted the, the dimensions a little bit but then this one see that one is a bit too big it's about half a millimeter too big I wanted the tolerances to be really good so uh, then I've tried this one and that one's almost correct so that's that's what I need now similarly for these panels when I tried this in it worked fine but I don't know what I did when I was moving them about because they didn't work perfectly to begin with so yeah I tried that one that was way out so I tried it again this one I was getting there then this was too wide and I think that little bit there between was too big so I had to shift those over a little bit finally I get to this bit and there it works the DC power thing fits in there great all right so several iterations of this but I discovered that my bamboo has got a ludicrous speed so I've been printing stuff out at ludicrous which has been great fun this is all ready to go now so I will send this to the printer and we've got this um, which way does it say okay um, do this the way that they've done it on here and then this so is it that way oh, I don't think it's that way yeah so I don't think it's that way because there's too many things on the back has that got a writing on it I think it's maybe it is that way oh scary Let's just see if I can gently push it in. See if it wants to go in that way. Sometimes you can feel it. Right, that seems to be resisting. So let's go turn it the other way and try that. Oh yeah, it looks like you can. Yeah, I can't see the pins that way but the other way I can see the pins there you go so I think it's that way it goes in with the pins above 
Is that slightly bent? slightly bent you know I'm just looking at the other one there so that would be in reverse wouldn't it yeah so that would be in that way with the pins on the top so is this the same yeah I think it is the same isn't it just check in Seems slightly bent though, which isn't surprising the way that it arrived. Just the edge piece there. That would be a bit scary. Just the edge piece there. See, it's slightly bent. I'll use these precision. That's done it. Let's try again. I hope that's okay. That was um, a bit scary. Okay, I can just turn this over, I think, without fear of rep reprisal. I'll make sure that that's not shorting against anything. These are always so sketchy when you're just trying to power them up. I've got to find 12 volt supply to go in there. Looks promising. <laughs> Yay! All right, so yeah, that does work. So it's showing no signal, obviously. It's working exactly the same way as my uh, uh, video that I did here with the controller board. So probably all of these controllers are the same, are the same sort of thing. So let's get this into an enclosure now so that we can use it in a safer way than this. Okay, so it's the next day now, and here is the back of my iPad case. Yeah, so it, it's not the sleek design of the existing iPad, but let's just see whether my things fit in it. So here's the board. So hopefully that should go through the hole. Yeah, it fits in there. And if I push on these, it's not going to push back into the box. So this is a bit bouncy. What I'm gonna do is put a little tab on this maybe put a heat insert there so I can have a screw in it with something that will just come over and hold the board in place. I've noticed uh, one of the issues I've got but I didn't really want to do this uh, until I've got the board in place. I've got to work out where to put these and maybe the side there is the best place but uh, I'm going to have to do a version two of this case to make sure I've got the buttons working but I'm not going to do that in this video but you'll no doubt see this screen in uh, later videos when I get to use it on something. We've already seen this working so let's assemble this then and I put a helpful little bit of red on this now so that I can tell which is the correct way fiddly as it always is but that's the way that goes in there can I get it in quicker than I did last time so here we go the moment of truth yes yeah, so that fits on there quite well now oh, flip I really don't like all the finger marks on this. Maybe I need a screen protector on this afterwards, although I won't be touching the screen. All right, and I've obviously got to do something with the little standoffs to make sure that they go so I can recess this screen into the box. Uh, but there we go. So let's power it up. Still got some power here. I think this might end up being upside down, but that's fine. It'll probably work out well for the desk. There you go, that bit works. I oh, know it's come out the right way. Like the way I wanted it. All right, so definitely um, 
the screen is working, I'm just going to do something very, uh, <laughs> very temporary until I get the case back sorted out. All right, so I think I'll get my, um, my Mac, uh, Pico Mac, and see whether this will drive the screen. Uh, looks like it's locked into HDMI and doesn't have a hunt so this is going to ruin the aesthetics of this completely let's just drag those outside for a little bit I've got a little um, LED on this as well so I've source I've got a source button not AV it's, is it VGA All right, so, oh man, this screen, the screen quality on this is great. I want to do this now, because it's an iPad, I want to make it bigger, but that's not going to work, is it? But yeah, the, the quality on this, I'm not sure whether you can see it. Yeah, that's coming, that's coming through really, really well there. Let's see, very, very sharp. Um, I can't really see any alias in on it. This bit here is a little bit blurry, but that's probably uh, the Pico doing that. But yeah, that looks great. I wonder what else I can get working on it. Obviously the, the Pico Mac only uses a small portion of the screen. <gasps> Spoilers. Let's see what it's gonna be like with an HDMI signal. Okay, so let's, uh, here's an HDMI signal. Should be able to pop this in. I might need to change the source. Okay, yeah, so it, uh, it makes a lovely cosy fireplace. So this is just something plain off YouTube, but that's cool. Yeah, so uh, this is a bit of an inception moment, isn't it? <laughs> a video about my old iPad being played on my old iPad. Yeah, so if you haven't seen this video, there's a link to this here, a link in the description as well, where I took apart this iPad. If you're uh, new to the channel, have a look at this video which shows you how I disassemble the iPad and the first part of this journey. But yeah, I think uh, I obviously need some tidying up to do. This is not ideal. I need to put the buttons on the side and uh, lower this into the case. But I think this is gonna make an absolutely great preview monitor so I can see what I'm doing in the cave. I think I'm really happy with this as a pretty fantastic screen actually. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and see uh, the next video. I gave you a really sneak preview of the update to my Pico board. You'll see that coming out soon as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe. If you're not already, uh, please give me a like. But otherwise, bye. That's okay, that was um, a bit scary. So let's power this up. Should I be worried about the uh, amount of feedback these guys have got? Mm. No, extra thousand, probably safe.